Yo, what's going on people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you man are all doing well today. I really do hope that Olivier Giroud for oh, Sevilla nil in Spain. Oh. Chelsea have topped the group. We've dominated. Giroud's dominated. Lampard made like nine changes. Chelsea have got like the best squad in Europe. We're going to win the World Cup. Cancel football now. We've done it. Or I'm going to calm down a little bit. I'm going to calm down a little bit. But what a superb result from Chelsea's B team. Heavy rotation. Five substitutions. The reintegration of a few players. Incredible scenes. Winning 4-0. A perfect hat-trick. A perfect hat-trick. Plus a lovely penalty from Olivier Giroud. Just, just, he just dismantled Sevilla. Granted, there was heavy rotation from the Spaniards as well. But they brought on big players, they still have some good players, and we just absolutely dismantled them. So yeah, of course, this is your match review of Chelsea's Champions League game against Sevilla, topping the group. Well, we've got like 13 points now, something in superb. Go subscribe, why not, man? Subscribe to Football Therapy if you're new to this experience. Please do drop a like if you're feeling good, man. If you're feeling fine. I don't know what I'm saying. Let's get into it. So, like I said, it was away in Seville, Chelsea versus Sevilla. They had some changes. Basically, both clubs have uh, qualified, so there was heavy rotation from both. Of course, Sevilla have got problems with um, uh, a couple of positive tests as well, but generally, they're in good shape in both Europe and domestically, and they come into this game with confidence, and of course, they still brought on some of their stronger players. Frank Lampard, knowing that it's a heavy, heavy fixture schedule coming up, he rotated pretty, pretty heavily as well, and, you know, you just basically try and win it and look at your players. Because we know recently in the Champions League, topping the group doesn't always mean you get a favourable draw. Just make sure you qualify and hope for the best. And generally, winning it just about tips it. You know, just about. But it's not, you know, a foregone conclusion that you're going to get an easy draw. You could get a Real Madrid, a PSG, loads of big teams still. So you see what I'm saying here. So let's talk about how Frank Lampard lined up his Chelsea team in this matchup and look at this who scored graphic for some context. So Frank Lampard went with a 4-3-3 formation. I think he made about nine changes from the London Derby. Mendy keeps his place in goal as Piliqueta comes into right back. Emerson comes in for left back. And then Rudiger and Christensen both come in for the centre back positions. Kante's rested. Jorginho starts. Flanked by Kovacic, which I believe him and Mendy were the only two people that kept their place. And there's a return for Kai Havertz trying to find some fitness. Similarly for Christian Pulisic on the left wing. Callum hudson Adoy who's played well recently, starts on the right wing. And Olivier Giroud, the man of the moment, the man of the match, starts up front. Oh yeah, there were sub appearances from Mason Mount, Hakim Ziyech, Billy Gilmore, Timo Werner and N'Golo Kante who got an assist for Olivier Giroud. Superb scenes to see that man. Right, so we can run through the goal scorers but it was just Olivier Giroud. Uh, we're going to talk about player performances in a little while but let's talk about the goals. <laughs> So it's a perfect hat trick, left foot, right foot, header, and then Giroud did excellent work to win that penalty himself. And I was like, well, he's not going to take it because there's other players on the pitch that want goals and he scored a perfect hat trick. But he was like, no, mate, I'm taking this. I want to stake my claim here. This is my, like, career. I want to start for Chelsea until the end of the season. And, you know, Jorginho in the pre-match press conference, he said, look, we're so happy for him when he scores. He deserves it. They want him to score. I'm not saying people dislike Tammy Abraham or, you know, Timo Werner starting down the middle, but I think the squad genuinely all love Giroud. And the man can't do much more. I mean, he probably won't start against Leeds because of the type of game it is. And he's going to, you know, need to be rested maybe. But he, generally, moving forward, Frank Lampard's going to have to think, damn, Olivier Giroud. Anyway, his goals were great. Had a couple of dinks. or well, one of the dinks was just beautiful. All of, To be honest, it was a perfect hat trick. But each goal was incredible. And the penalty was good. I could just wax lyrical about this man for ages. Superb. Sevilla did pose a few threats. Um, but ultimately, Chelsea took control, um, and apart from Chelsea having a few naive defensive moments, they were pretty good. So let's move on and talk about player performances now. Edouard Mendy and co, fine. I mean, was he really tested? It's very difficult to talk about someone's performance in a game like this, or a goalkeeper's performance, I mean. So, 
good and move on, I suppose. As per Lequeta, Mr. Solid, 7 out of 10 as per usual. They played his role as a captain on the pitch, stopping some fights, obviously speak Spanish, chilled everything out. Pretty decent, but he's always pretty decent as Blaqueta. He's just not quite as high octane as Reese James when he's on song, so you can understand why he's second choice now. At left back, Emerson was actually pretty good, man. When he won that corner at the end, that was some excellent work rate. And I'm starting to think again, I'm starting to think, boy, is Emerson really like, maybe he's a capable backup option. We know Alonso's cooks and done out here, but Emerson's come on a few times recently, maybe he is a good backup left back again. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section on that. For the centre backs, <laughs> fine I suppose a few moments considering we were all worried when we saw it didn't we, that whole back line. But both Christensen and Rudiger did pretty well in this game I think, in terms of not too naive. One thing I did notice man, was Antonio Rudiger played some excellent long diagonals to the point of me thinking like damn man like do you what the, I'm, I can't remember him really doing that. I'm talking like really good long cross field balls that find their targets. Something that I took notice of, so he definitely deserves a shout out of that. For that rather, uh, Jorginho, pretty good. We know he's been pretty good recently. Um, you know, against a team like Sevilla that like to move the ball a lot, he's a good player there. It's really when you sort of have to dig in a bit more. But I think Jorginho was pretty good. Kovacic, um, frustrated, he got a yellow, he made a few poor decisions in terms of carrying the ball for too long, but he actually grew into the game and got better, uh, I think before he got subbed as well. Um, what else, Kai Havertz, in the first half, I loved Kai Havertz, man, he got that beautiful assist in the first half, uh, he did some excellent juggling with the ball to keep possession, he does just collide across the pitch, magnificent in the first, he was my player of the first half, uh, you know, of course, Olivia Giroud eclipsed that eventually, but in the first half, for me, Kai Havertz was magnificent. Uh, Christian Pulisic frustrated me in the first half, uh, purely because I know he's such an amazing player. He was our best attacker last season. Um, you know, granted he's come back into the team and he's probably just trying too hard. Lost possession a few times. Uh, you know, didn't take up the opportunity to play players in. Got a silly yellow card for a bad tackle. But he's an absolute baller and I wouldn't worry too much about Pulisic. He'll come good and there's a space for him in this team. So hopefully he doesn't worry about that. I think on the other side, Callum hudson Adoy was very good. Much more assured and calm and Pulisic uh, did some excellent work on and off the ball. That will please Frank Lampard. He's settling more and more into the Chelsea first team. Callum hudson Adoy, so that's very pleasing to see. And of course, the big man himself. Minimal touches, maximum output. Olivier Giroud, always in the right place at the right time, knows exactly where to go, what to do. This guy is... <laughs> he just classes permanent, isn't it? The thing is, I know Giroud's good, and I'm never actually this amped about him, genuinely. But I've known he's great, I know he's good, I know what he's offers. But this makes you think, mm, just, maybe Giroud should be starting for Chelsea above the other strikers. Do you know what I mean? It really puts that in your head. He is underrated, and what a magnificent performance, man. Just in terms of a total you know, complete striker performance. Superb. Uh, Mason Mount came on, looked all right, nearly got into a fight, which was pretty funny. Ziyech, you know, didn't really get a chance. Um, Billy Gilmore came on. I didn't really get to watch him because by then I was just like in a mad Giroud goal scoring haze. <laughs> Werner nearly scored as soon as he came on, and of course, a girl like Kante got an assist as well, so that's pretty good. Nice little from the right wing played in Giroud. Superb little assist from Kante, actually. I was really happy to see that. That's me going through player performances. Let's move on and talk about the group and the Champions League generally. Right, so Chelsea have topped the group. We've done it. It's settled, dusted, done and dusted. The final game, we can literally play the same guys. A heavily rotated side. Give them the chance to play in Europe again and basically try and claim a spot on the first team. It's the perfect position position for Chelsea Football Club to be in. If you look at what's happening with Man United and stuff, they've made it difficult for themselves going into the final day. Not Chelsea, we're done mate. We've, we, well, we qualified with two games to spare and now we've topped the group with a game to spare. It's incredible, it's beautiful scenes and now we've got an opportunity to really utilise that final game for whatever we want essentially. Really rotate some players in, start Gilmore, start more kids if you want. Throw them in a Champions League game, why not I say. The biggest takeaway though for me is Chelsea's B team is incredibly strong and Olivier Giroud is an absolute boss. I'm so pleased to see him just come in and dominate and just have such a good game. And Chelsea have got three excellent strikers in my opinion. So let me know what you guys think. 
Get down in the comment section, express your thoughts on this game. I want to hear it, man. I want to read it. I want to see it go down into the comment section. Please do drop a like if you've enjoyed the content of me just being really excited in today's video. Hopefully it was fun. Consider subscribing to Football Therapy if you are new to the experience. Daily videos right here, mate. Enjoy the football, and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chalk In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I let me back